Hello, everyone. Uh, well, my name is Sebastian Chopin, and I'm the co-creator of Nux.js. So today I'm going to talk about Nux2 and the last release as well that came out this morning. So yeah, this is me. Uh, you can find me on GitHub, Twitter, Instagram uh, with 18 Nux. And yeah, that's, that's it for that. So uh, at the beginning, Nux.js was created um, as a universal framework. But today, since the version 2, Next is a, a Vue.js framework, which helps you to create optimized application. So we have code splitting by default for every pages. We have resource hints, so we will add this link preload and prefetch. And we handle critical CSS by default for you. It's a versatile framework, which means that now, you can create universal application, you can create pre-rendered application that you can deploy on any CDN, and you have the single page application mode that you have uh, with the, when you create a normal Vue.js application with Vue CLI. So our main focus now is the developer experience. Uh, so the point is you, with Nux, we want you to create application quickly without having to worry about the webpack configuration. We want you to write view file in Joy. And we have this tool called Consola and Webpack Bar, which are tools to trying to avoid all this mess that you can have in the console when using Webpack. So actually, we are pretty proud that Webpack Bar is used inside Next.js, which is Next for React, and also in Razzle and Viewpress as well. And this, the main point is Nuxt is extensible. So you can create module if you want to extend the Nuxt.js behavior, or even if you want to change the core part of Nuxt. We have also the hook system, which is really advanced. And also you can use it programmatically. So if you want to use it inside your express application, you can use it as a middleware. So today we released Nuxt 2.3 this morning. And what's new in Nuxt 2.3? We have this modern mode, so it's still in, in beta, so it's not activated by default. But the point of this is when you add this flag, it will create two builds, so we will see that in the demonstration. But the point is, with this, we will have two bundles, one for evergreen browsers and one for the old browsers. And because we use server-side rendering, we are able to detect what browser is actually requesting this page. So we will directly give the right bundle to the browser. And of course, because it's the modern build, you won't have any polyfill, which means your bundle for the modern browsers will be 16% smaller, at least. We improved a lot these developer experience. So by this, it means better logging, warning, and Next box, who helps you to know which version of Next you're using, with what mod you are, production, development, staging, or, uh, and also the rendering mod and then the memory usage, if you want, that can be pretty useful in development. Whoops. Uh, we introduced also next help command. So right now you can, use it, you can use it with NPX, but soon you will have a global, um, global next CLI that you will be able to install. So this is how we look like when you run next help, and of course you can use it like next help build, so you will have all the options that you can give instead of looking inside the documentation. And we have this new project that is also open source and that you can use in other projects than Vue, which is serve placeholder. So we use it by default inside Next, so you can also configure it. And it will, it will create some fallbacks for this static request. When you load the website, Chrome will try to get the favicon, so we'll also call slash favicon.eco. And if you don't have it in your static folder, we will directly give a 404 static code without having to call next. So it will also improve the performances. Same for robot.txt. And it's the same also for pictures. When you don't have the picture, we will send back a, a transparent pixel, which can be pretty useful. And we will still send back the 404 study code, so you can still debug your application and see that this picture is missing. So I want to show you, because uh, I've done a lot of talks doing this uh, uh, theoretical stuff, so now I want to show you how it looks like.
Hmm. So yesterday, Adam wasn't made a nice demo of the advanced view component. So I'm going to, I was pretty surprised that he was not using server-side rendering. So I was like, okay, let's try to move it to use server-side rendering. And I will try to show you right now how, we, how it can be easy to do it as well, to move to Next when you need server-side rendering. So, okay. This is the live demo, and we have. Okay, this is Adam Wadden code. So if I do. Yes, I'm used to dev, so in Vuecelite serve. Can I just, okay. So this is the application that you have seen yesterday. Who were at the Adam talk yesterday? <laughs> okay, everyone, <laughs> perfect. So I'm going to transform this so we can have server-side rendering here, but still have the same user experience. I mean, improve the user experience with server-side rendering. So here we are, okay. I will try at first to move directory to explain. So I have my simple project here. So it's called live demo. Let's look at the package.json. I installed the last version of Nuxt, which is the 2.3.1. I installed Nuxt per CSS, which is a module that is, um, we recommend it to use when you use this kind of, of library that creates a lot of classes for you. But most of the time, you may use only 10% of these classes. And I installed Tailwind CSS. So I have the same Tailwind.js file. And in my nux.config.js, I added the header, which is just for SEO purpose. I added this CSS, which is here, that just required the Tailwind utilities. And in my build post CSS, I added the Tailwind plugin and auto prefixer. And if we look how we look like inside the view CLI project, post-CSS is actually in the package.json. With Nux, we have it inside nux.config, so we can uh, know what are the values directly, and we can transform them, mostly for Nux processes. And yeah, so the dependency, it has Tailwind as well. I don't install ESL in temperature, so it could be faster. So then we have a public directory. So we are going to move this public directory directly copying it and pasting it here. But in Nux, it doesn't, the name is not public, it's directly static. So that's it for the public directory. Then I have my views and I have my router. With Nux, you don't have the router by default. We will read all your pages uh, all your file inside pages to create this page. So I will copy view and I will paste it here. Yeah, my copy and paste doesn't work since I upgraded my Mac, so I have to do it multiple times. Damn it. If someone knows how we can fix this copy and paste, um, we can talk later after this talk. Okay, copy, paste, okay. Like, thank you, Mac. So here, we will run this project to see what are the routes that are created. So when you're creating a Nux application, Nux will automatically create this .nux folder for you. Well, I, I resize it, that's why it's completely ugly. ugly. I will restart. Okay, so here, if I look at this router.js, we can see that we import all these routes directly by using this um, lazy loading feature that actually Eduardo explained just the talk before. And we can see that we have these routes now. So to respect the same router that Adam created, I will just rename this page. So it will be index, it will be landing, landing page. Oh, 
for my card and oops contact list yes okay then the last thing I, I want to do is actually to copy the components because we actually have the same project I mean the same um, the same name for the components so I copy this directory here and I think we should be good so if I look at my router and I now I have contact list, landing page, profile card, and slash. And if I look at the viewconf demo router here, I have the same one, contact list, profile card, slash, and landing page. So let's see how we look like now. So we have a blank page here. Wait, let me try again because we may have some issues now with some importing the components. Yeah, one thing that I forgot to remove is inside my static directory, I had this index.html file that is directly served, so I will just delete it. Okay, so now if I refresh, okay, I have I have all my CSS, my Tailwind CSS, which is directly in, injected, and if I try to scroll to the bottom, wow, well, that is terrible. I don't have a mouse. Okay, if I go here, I can see that I have my page which is, which is server rendered. Okay, so then 70 minutes left. We can do it. Okay, so let's look at the layout actually. If I look at this <clears throat> page, I can see that Adam is using this demo layout component where he's wrapping everything inside. With Next.js, we actually have a layout, a, pay, a layout component that we can use directly. So I will copy this demo layout that I have here. and I will put it inside layout default. And that's terrible. That's my copy paste. That doesn't work. Well, what I'm, what I'm going to show you instead, because I need to fix my computer, is the actual version that I built yesterday. So I have my layout here, which is the same component that we have seen. And instead, I'm actually using Nuxt, which is the same as Router View. But what's, why using Nuxt instead of Router View is we actually handle transitions for you on top of this Router View. So Nuxt is simply a, a functional component that render transition and Router View directly inside. So let's start this project. Okay. So one thing that I want to switch back is in this component, this fetch JSON, actually he was using this created hook and I want to talk a bit about this. So if I go here, while well, I have the same version now, I can go to contact list, it's working, profile card, landing page. But one thing that is important when you're doing server-side rendering is if I refresh this page, it, tell me, it tells me that fetch is not defined. So <clears throat> with server-side rendering, there is two hooks that are called on server-side rendering, when doing this server-side rendering, is before create and created. So when Nux will try to server-render this component, it will actually go inside created and try to code fetch, which is undefined inside the Node.js environment. So what we can do here is to switch to before mount, which actually is not called on server-side rendering. So when I do this, I can see that I have this component server render, and then be, when it is going to be mounted on client side, it will do this API call. 
If I want to server render this list, what I will do instead is inside my page, I will have this async data um, method that Nux provides you where you can fetch the components, the, um, the contact list, and then give it as a prop to this component. But since he wanted to use fetch a JSON like a component, you can't use it for server-side rendering yet because we are not able to track all these components tree. But thanks to Guillaume Show pull request to view, soon we will be able to have async data everywhere in all the components. This might be dangerous too, but we will explain how to avoid doing some bad stuff with that. So <clears throat> what I want to show you is actually this feature of the modern build. So I will actually build this project with this modern option, and I will also call this analyze option. So as you can see now, we have three builds, one for client, one for modern, and one for server. So when the client is finished, it will open directly on Chrome to see all my bundle. This is really useful before publishing to production to know where you can optimize your bundle. And then when the modern is done, he opened me this modern build. So as you can see here, this is the normal build, and this is the modern build. And the difference is here. We have these polyfills, which is 10 kilobytes chipped, and here it disappears. So we actually are 33 kilobytes against 45. And if I run, if I start this project, with this modern option. And I go to localhost here. What I can see here is it is actually using this modern because it detects my browser is a modern browser, an evergreen browser. If I remove this option here, I can see that it switched back to this uh, normal build. So what about if I want to use Next Generate then, that I don't have a server checking my um, headers to know what, uh, what browser is actually um, calling this page. So let's actually generate with the modern build as well. So Next Generate, for those uh, where it's new, this is a, a feature that we have since the, one of the first version of Next. What it does, is it will look at all your pages and server render this route and save it as a, an HTML page. So you can directly push this dist folder that it created for you directly to a CDN. So right now we have an index.html. We see that we have all the content here. We have our landing page index.html. We have all our static routes. If I was using dynamic routes, I, was, I would have an option to nux.config.js to tell him, okay, this is all my dynamic routes and generate them as well. So now if I serve this directory here and I go to localhost 5000, I can see that this is server rendered, but it's not, we don't have a server anymore. I'm using serve because on localhost it will be file and there is some problem with that. But if I look at the source code now, these are the modern build. And here, as you can see, we have the two of them. We have module here and we have no module here. So because we can't guess the browser, we actually give them the two script and using module and no module. So the browser that, that doesn't support the module, we directly load the other file. And here, because it's prefetched and preloaded and it's in the modern browser, we directly give it the latest um, build. So that's it. And <clears throat> for SPA, I want to show you how we can also use this single page application mode. So I will just run, I will just show you like this. By using this uh, dash dash SPA, I'm just giving the uh, information to Nux that I only need a client bundle. So if I go to localhost 3000 now, I have actually the same application that Adam created with, with Vue CLI. So I don't have any more um, server rendered content, 
but what we can give, because we know um, the pages, we are still able to give him the preload and prefetch, and we are also able to give him the head. So the head that you're giving to nux.config.js, we know them, so we are able to directly give these meta tags. So it's like an improvement of single page application. So lastly, I want to show you how we can simply deploy this directory. Well, actually, I deployed it yesterday. So if I go to view Toronto, view, well, now here, okay, I don't have internet now. This is annoying. Okay, well, yeah, you can check the demo. I will publish my slide on Twitter so you will be able to check the demo online. It has been several rendered and generated. So it's like the same demos, instead that you have the SEO on top of it. And actually, I, when I did this uh, switch from Vue to Nux, it took me around 20 minutes. And lastly, I want to show you what pure CSS can do. So we have this module for Nux. I will disable it to show you the difference. So I will say next build. Yeah, this takes a while, but I have no other choice. Okay, so here what you can see is we have 48 kilobyte of CSS inside my bundle. What I could do is I can extract this CSS and put it on a CDN, but what if I have the best of the two world extract CSS so I will only render the minimum CSS for my page and also have pure CSS that will remove all these useless classes. So by adding this module here, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm actually giving this post CSS information because I don't want to use this extract CSS mode. So when I will run it again, so I have my CSS here. And now, I don't have my CSS anymore. I mean, I have, I have it here, and it's two kilobyte now. So we actually saved 46 kilobyte of JavaScript. I really need this, well, I know how, what I can do. Okay, so lastly, I want to show you, when I said next, help you to create optimized application, I want to show you Lighthouse Core, because I can't say it just fast and, and then you will trust me. I w you need some proof and I need some proof as well. So I will use the modern build here to have like the minimum CSS, the minimum JavaScript. Thank you, Webpack, for, for this speed. Okay, so now I have <clears throat> my page. I will open it in an incognito window because I have my extension that can make this lighthouse core uh, different. And then I will run an audit of this page. So just to show you how it looks like in production, this is my extracted CSS that I have here. This is the Nux progress bar CSS, and this is the layout CSS. And then I'm not using custom CSS because I'm using Tailwind classes. So if I run this audit, I would just pray that it will be good. It would be good. And it will work also. Yeah, I have five minutes left. I think he's, did he die? God, <laughs> I'm not doing any more live demo, I think, after this talk. <laughs> or at least I will switch my Mac. Okay, let's try again. Localhost. 
Okay, let's run the audit now. Do you think he needs internet so he can work? Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm trying the, to share my connection, but he can't see it apparently. Well, this is broken. So I ran this test score, and it was 100 for the performances, and it was 100 for SEO as well. And the best practice, the only thing we were missing was these HTTP2 push headers that we plan to support really soon. So we support them, but you need your own server that support HTTP2. And then apparently we need internet to make Lighthouse works. So to finish here, so I will share this demo on my Twitter account so you can try run Lighthouse. And if you guys have internet, this should work. So what's next with the, the new version, the next version of Next is the full static generate. So people ask us, um, okay, I'm using Next Generate, but when I push it on production, I'm using an external API. Okay, so this is good. I'm generating my application at this time, but when I'm navigating on the website, on client side, it's still making this API call. So in the next version, we'll have an option that makes the full static, so you won't have any more API call, and then we can enhance it with PWN offline support by default. We will have modules common, so in the next version of Nux, we'll have the option when you create a module to create sub command for Nux directly. So we, you will have Nux PWA command. You will have async data everywhere, so this is a pending pull request. We're waiting to, for Avenue to merge it, thanks to Guillaume Show, who did it a week ago. We will have reactive loading. So one thing um, which is nice when you're navigating in a Next application is you have this loading bar and when uh, the API call has been made, it, there are swi it's switching the page. But on client side, sometimes I want it to be faster to give user feedback quickly. So the, with the reactive loading, you will have an option to say, okay, this async data method on client side, I want you to directly switch to this page. We may use view promise for that. So you will be able in your template to say, while async data is loading, show this kind of placeholder, and when it's done, you will have the full page. So you can directly give feedback to the user that is switching to the new page without having to wait for the API call. And we will also improve this file system routing for dynamic pages. Instead of using an underscore, we will use brackets that will allow you to have multiple params inside one page. And actually, I would like to thank our core team. So we are now six and soon seven in the core team. This is an international core team, like the view team, I think, like all the open source project. That's why open source is so great as well. If you want more information, we have our website, nuxjs.org. It's also translated in seven, seven language. You can find more information on, on our Twitter as well and on GitHub. And lastly, we have Nux stickers. Uh, that are on the tables at the entrance. And I'm sorry for the live demo that didn't work today. Uh, I will publish the link on Twitter in five minutes. Thank you very much.